we've been solving quadratic equations, we've solved by factoring, we've solved by taking square root, solved by completing the square. <coughs> I'm going to tell you this in advance. Completing the square is not going to be a method that you really are going to want to use all the time. The reason we learned it is so that you can understand where we get the quadratic formula. And y'all have seen the quadratic formula before, but you may not remember it. But once you see where it comes from, it makes a little more sense to you. Somebody did not just make it up out of the, snatch it out of thin air, make up the quadratic formula. So, <clears throat> our strategy, what we were doing before, when we were solving by square roots is, we were kind of being creative and noticing, I have an option on this, I could subtract 5, make it equal 0, then try to factor it, but I'd have an ugly thing to factor. If I leave it just like it is, and I pay close attention, this is kind of got it. It's kind of got to leap out and yell at you, but it is a perfect square trinomial. Remember, you have a test. Is the first term a square? Yes. 4x times 4x. Is the last term a square? Yes. 3 times 3. Is the middle term a double? You do outsides and insides. You'll have 12x and another 12x that doubles to be 24x. So you have to really be able to recognize a perfect square trinomial. Talk to me. How does that factor? 4x plus 3 plus 3 squared equals 5. But the nice thing about being on your toes and recognizing it is now you have a shortcut. You just have to take the square root of both sides. And you have 4x plus 3 equals and whenever you take the square root of both sides as a process of solving, don't forget plus or minus. Then subtract 3. And we just have 4x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. And then divide both sides by 4. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 4. Is this a real solution? Yes. yes. There's no I in it. It is real. But what else is it? Irrational. Irrational because you can't do anything about the fact that you got a square root of 5 in your answer. If you graph it on the x-axis, it'll show up at a decimal spot. Okay. Then example 5. <clears throat> it looks kind of like the same deal. Is it a perfect square trinomial on the left side? Because this is the first term to square, it's x times x. The last term to square, it's 5 times 5. But does 5x and 5x double to be 8x? Yeah. What would you need in the middle? So on this one, the trick doesn't work. Because this one is not a perfect square trinomial. But then notice, solving equations by completing the square on your notes, and I'll let you read through the steps by yourself. I just want to show you, okay, what if our truth doesn't work? Can we force it to work? So example one is that exact same problem again. And we said, it doesn't work. Because 25 is not the right number that I need to make it be a perfect square trinomial. Since it's not, let's do this. Subtract 25 from both sides. Then we have x squared minus 8x equals 7 minus 25, negative 18. Oh, right here. Thank you. Now, I can force this to be a perfect square trinomial if I add the right thing right here. And here's what you got to remember. And I always draw boxes to remind me. Whatever I do to one side, I must also do the same thing on the other side. So can you look at that and tell me what is it that I would need to add? 16. You're right, Victoria. Because remember,
remember that this is a double. So you're kind of working backwards. If you undouble it, take half of it, it's four. And then this is always a square right here. It comes from taking half of, of the middle and squaring it. Four times four means if we add 16 on the left and then we do the same thing on the right, add 16 on the right, we have now forced this to be one of those shortcut kind of problems. How does this factor? It is now a perfect square trinomial. It factors to be x plus 4 squared equals negative 2. I have something squared all by itself, so I can just take the square root of both sides. The square root of x plus 4 squared, the square root of negative 2, I get, and any time I take the square root of both sides, don't forget plus or minus. So x plus 4 equals plus or minus, what am I going to do with the square root of negative 2? I times square root of 2. That means subtract 4, and we have it. x equals negative 4 plus or minus i times the square root of 2. We have solved. This is the number that you would have to plug in for every x to make this equation equal 7. Are you okay? Do another one. That was example 1. Example 2 on your notes. If you look at that, is it a perfect square trinomial? It looks like one. It's almost one. What's wrong with it? Yeah, this is a square. Nothing negative is ever a square. If it was a plus 9, it would be a different story, but it's not. It's not a perfect square trinomial. We're going to try to force it to be one. Negative 9 is not the number I need. So, I'm going to move it. I'm going to add 9 on both sides. Then I have x squared <coughs> minus 6x equals 9. I want to complete the square. Complete the square means I want to force the left-hand side to be a perfect square trinomial by adding just the right thing. I'm going to put it in a box. Can you tell me what I need to add? Positive 9. How did I get it? Always, we're going to take a half of the middle, undouble the middle, that's 3, then square it. 3 times 3 means add 9. Whatever we do to one side, we must also do to the other side. You will draw yourself some little boxes you will tend to not forget. Now, this is a perfect square trinomial. It factors as x minus 3 squared equals 18. We've got something squared by itself. Shortcut. Take the square root of both sides. That means x minus 3 equals plus or minus, because when we take the square root of both sides, it has to be plus or minus. What am I going to do with the square root of 18? 3 square root of 2. We're almost there. Solve for x. Add 3. When we write the solution, we're going to call it start here, 3 plus or minus 3 square roots of 2. The two we really have two solutions there, right? 3 plus, square root, 3 plus 3 square roots of 2 is one, and 3 minus 3 square roots of 2 is the other. They're irrational, but if you check them, that will work when you plug them in. Number 3, the plot thickens just a little bit x squared plus 3x plus 8 equals 0. Is that a perfect square trinomial? We could try to factor it, but does anything multiply to be 8 and add to be 3? Okay. So we're going to go with a different option. We're going to try to force this into being a perfect square trinomial. 
Eight's not the right number that I need, so I'm going to subtract eight from both sides, and that leaves me x squared plus 3x equals negative eight. If we had just the right thing, and it's legal to add something on one side, as long as I do the same thing on the other side, because now I haven't changed the value of the equation, it still means the same thing. This time it's not so easy to see. What do we add? No, we, we want fractions, not decimals. There's a reason. They're easier to work with, and I'll show you in a minute. Minus we do the same thing. What we we take we've got to undouble the middle. So take half of the middle. If I do half of three, that means half times three. That gives me three halves. Then what do I do with that? I took half of six and then I squared it. It was three, and then I did three times three. So if I take half of three, it's three halves. Now I square it. So it's Nine fourths. We're going to add nine fourths to both sides. This is now a perfect square trinomial because the first term is x times x, the last term is three halves times three halves. And if I do outside times outside, I would have three halves x plus another three halves x. That would give me six halves x or three x. So the, the outside times outside and inside times inside add together to equal the middle. That means this factors as x plus three halves squared equals on the other side, in order to add these, what do I need? This is eight, negative eight over one. What's the common denominator? So if I go from 1 to 4, how do I get there? Times 4. Do the same thing on top. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. To get from 4 to 4, I didn't do anything, so we don't have to make a change on the top. We keep it as 9 fourths. Now on to add fractions. Remember, we keep the bottom and only add across the top. x plus 3 halves squared equals something over 4. Negative 32 plus 9, where do we land? Now we've got something squared by itself. So shortcut, take the square root of both sides. That leaves me x plus 3 halves, uh, just x plus 3 halves equals plus or minus, because we took the square root of both sides. Can I do anything with this? You can pull it apart. Is there a square root of negative 23? I square root of 23 is about the best I can do with it because 23 doesn't factor. But what about the square root of 4? Yeah, I call it just 2. We're almost finished. What do I need to do to solve for x? Subtract 3 halves. So here's where we are. The value of x, start here, is negative 3 halves plus or minus i times the square root of 23 all over 2. You might see it written in two separate fractions. I'll take it like this. This is okay. I would also take it if you said both of these have a denominator of 2, so I'm going to squish the fractions together. That's also okay. We're going to skip number four because it's a very similar thing. I want you to look at number five. Tell me what is different about number five. Do you notice anything? There's a two. The only time you have to worry about this rule is if you are trying to complete the square, you need a leading coefficient of one. That's 
only if we're completing the squared. You gotta, you gotta first get a leading coefficient of one. Be easy to forget that. If you forget it, you will miss the problem. If you're trying to keep completing the squared. So here's number five. Solve that by completing the square. Step one, make the leading coefficient become a one instead of a two. How do I do that? No, the, I want to start, I want to just turn this into a, into a one. So divide every single term all the way across on both sides of the equal sign by two as your first step. Then you have 1x squared, reduce this fraction, minus 4x, plus 15 halves, I can't do much with that, equals 0 divided by 2 is 0. Put a star by number 5 and also put a star by number 6 because both of those are problems where you don't start out with a 1. So what's the first thing you will have to do on number, on number 6? Divide everything by 3. Write that down right now. Divide everything by 3 because we may not get to that one today. But I want you to be aware that that's what you have to do to get started. Okay. Our goal is solve by completing the square. In other words, add the right number that will force it to be a perfect square trinomial. Is 15 over 2 a perfect square? It's not the number we need, then move it out of the way. So the first thing is subtract 15 halves from both sides. Then we have x squared minus 4x equals negative 15 halves. You okay, Bradley? I need to turn this into a perfect square trinomial. Do you see what I should add? Where did that come from? You're right. Half of 4 is 2, then square, square it. So we're going to add 4. Here's one of the biggest mistakes. I'm giving you a heads up. Don't do this. People add it on the left and then forget about it on the right. Whatever you do on one side, you must. If you will draw yourself boxes, you won't forget. Do the same thing on both sides. I have now forced this to be a perfect square trinomial, so it factors really nicely. Tell me, how does this factor? X minus 2 squared. In order to add the fractions that I have on, on the right side, what do I need? And this is 4 over 1. So what's the common denominator? 2. So I don't need to write both of these fractions with a denominator of 2. To get from 2 to 2, I made no change. So I keep negative 15. But if this is really 4 over 1, how do I get from 1 to 2? So that means on the top, I have 8. So I now have x minus 2 squared equals, squish those two fractions together. We only add on the top. Negative 7 halves. Where am I now? I've got something squared by itself. So we can do the shortcut. Take the square root of both sides. Remember, plus or minus. So I know that x minus 2 equals plus or minus. If I pull it into pieces and think of it as, yeah, square root of negative 7 separate from the square root of 2, there's not much I can do with 7, but I, I've got to deal with this, the negative part of it. So x minus 2 equals plus or minus i times the square root of 7. Can I do, what about the square root of 2? There's not one. Do I get to leave this one? A radical in the bottom of a fraction. What's the word? What's, what do we call it when we have to make that go away? Uh, rationalize. Rationalize means multiply by a special kind of one. In this case, square root of 
2 over square root of 2 will do it. Where am I? x minus 2 equals, talk to me, what do I have on the top? Plus or minus? Plus or minus? Well, I've got a square root of 7 times the square root of 2, so we have a product rule that says squish those all together. Yeah, plus or minus i times the square root of 14. And in the bottom, if I squish those all together, what do I have? Yeah, the square root of 4, so that's just 2. We're almost there. What now?